Hey everybody out there, this is Seto, and today for you guys, we are going to be doing a deck profile of my You Send You deck. And uh, before I get to today's video, guys, I want to mention thank you guys all for the support. Um, if you guys have been wondering what's been going on, there has been a lot going on with my life. Um, and I did a channel update a few days ago just discussing what's been going on. So, my humble apologies for not getting around to doing deck profiles. There was a lot going on. Uh, me having crush card. Um, actually, I, I legitly called uh, called crush card, um, quote unquote, and um, also had my room flooded, and some of my Yu-Gi-Oh cards got destroyed. So you can imagine, after going through all that for this past November, uh, I really wasn't in the mood to making deck profiles until recently, uh, getting back into it, and. I have to be honest with you, doing this deck profile right now, it's kind of therapeutic because it feels something normal that I've done in the past. So it just feels normal and to have a sense of normalcy in some regards is really nice. So thank you guys all for the support as well. So uh, yes, you send Jews. I've always thoroughly enjoyed this deck and the mechanic. Um, they kind of have a hit and run strategy where they hit you in the face and one run away because of their gimmick. Um, kind of reminds me of Guerrilla Warfare in a way. And I'd be kind of curious to know, this is something I was thinking about as I did this video, I don't know if these Kama monsters are based off any Japanese mythology or creature. I'd be curious to know. Uh, I believe they're based off like muskrats or something of that nature, but I believe there's some lore behind them, but I do not know. Uh, Japanese wise, not archetypal wise but uh, I'd be curious to know if you guys know that and can explain expand upon that in the comment section I'd be really awesome to know so uh, there are some different ratios I run in this deck compared to normal you send you decks I see a bunch of different ratios which we're going to discuss um, from play testing and playing this deck for years uh, my thoughts on that so first off I run three comma one comma one is kind of like your walker walking compulsory evacuation device it's really, really neat for the fact that um, you can just bop things back to the, you know, that are problematic on the field, just back to your opponent's extra deck, hand, etc. It helps get around problematic things. Um, there has been instances, even recently, as I was playing against some rogue-based decks, where I'm just like, pop that back, okay, there we go. Um, it's really nice. And it also helps facilitate the basic comma one, comma two, comma three, or comma three, comma you know whatever ratio way you're going about it, it helps facilitate it, um, which is really nice as well. Uh, next, we run three. You send you comma two. Uh, we run this as a three of as well. Uh, comma two is going to help. You can attack your opponent directly. It's also probably one of your bigger beaters of the deck, deck, which is nice in some regards for what it can do. So it's a little bit versatile in that aspect. Um, and we're going to talk about a little bit about here about the ratios of the commas, but uh, that's pretty much what comma two does. He has the same thing as comma one that you can summon some other commas. Uh, comma three, I'd say, is one of the better ones to some regard. It's kind of like a Stratos esque card of the deck. It's your searcher for your commas. Um, you can search all the new ones as well, which is really nice. You you send you commas. Um, so overall, I really like it in the deck. And it's very staple, I feel like, as a three of. Now, the reason I was discussing ratio-wise with all three of these guys here as I try to facilitate these all into one picture is some people run different ratios of the commas. And I wanted to talk about that for a second. Now, there's different reasons why, and I completely understand. Um, back when we had um, card demise at three of, right, I would have said, okay, it's okay to run them as two of each. Why is that? Well, because card demise is going to help draw your deck very quickly. And number two, you didn't want to have dead commas in your hand, quote unquote. Um, so for that reason, I was always on the fence, you know, the side of, hey, you run two commas, two comma one, two comma two, two comma three. With card demise being limited, I found through playtesting that it was back to the days before card demise was even out. You had to think about because if you didn't open with a comma. Well, you didn't get to your at least two of these, uh, this two of these at least going first in some ratio. You were going to be in a little bit of a hard spot, and you wanted to get to comma three so you could start facilitating stuff as well. So you know, comma one and comma three. I'd say the important comma two is, you know, important too. And I've seen people run different ratios. I've seen three, two, 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 three. You know, one. I've seen everything as I was doing research, and I was just like, okay. From playtesting, 
I found that 333 works the best. So if you wanted to cut it down and maybe run an ash blossom, go right ahead. If you believe your ratios have been working well for you, that's fine. That's your what your you know data tells you. Uh, but for my play testing, I like it at three of. Um, next we run U3, you send you Ishii. Um, this is one that initially was I wasn't too high on until I got into play testing it. So Yishi is I'm not gonna I'm very bad at pronouncing these names by the by, but um, this guy, I'll call him Yusenju Whip guy, he's really cool because of his effect. So initially I was running him as a one of, then a two of, and now I'm on the fence about a three of. Why is that? It's because he's very versatile and he's kind of like a hand trap in some regards. So what does he do? So he has two effects. You can discard this card, then turn your opponent this turn, your opponent can't activate cards or effects when a Yusenju monster or monsters is normal or special summon. That's pretty good. Number two, if this car, if you control another Yusenju monster, you can draw one card. And you get these at the end of the turn. You know, to, you know, he has to return to the hand at the end of the turn. They all pretty much say that. But he's really good in that effect because, you know, even though it says once per turn during the interface, you normally summon this card, return it to the hand, you can only use the effects of once per turn. His versatility is really nice. Now, yes, he can't bring out another, you know, you send you another comma, but he's a good one when you go like, okay, you send you, you send you, you send you, you send you, right? Because you'll get a draw off. And say you don't want that draw. Say you already have two in hand. I've gone against back ropes, back row based decks, which this deck, because it's a, uh, a f I don't want to say it's a trap based deck, but because it's kind of an anti meta strategy from the get go. Um, this card can help against back row based decks. I've had people, I've run into Torrential Tributes before. That's a nightmare even today. Uh, pitch. Uh, you run into Solemns. Pitch. Like, it helps protect you against stuff, which is really nice. Because, like it says, you discard this card. This turn, your opponent can't activate cards or effects when you send you monster is no longer special summon. So, you can pitch it. It's, it's, it's a great little hand, it's a hand trap that can give you some draw power. That's pretty good in a nutshell. And that's why I like him as a three of. I, initially, I wasn't too high on him until I talked to some judge friends. And I'm like, wait, does it do this? And they're like, I'm pretty sure it does. And then we were like, in tournament, oh yeah, it, it does. I went to locals before I got sick with this deck. Um, but yeah, I was really surprised. So I like it. It's kind of cool. Uh, next, we run two Yusenju Saba. This is a... <laughs> it's based off literally the guy who played the deck in Arc 5. Um, this helps you search your pendulum stuff and deal with your pendulum stuff. It's kind of like a searcher. I would say you could run this as a 2 or 1 of. That's up to you. But overall, I like it as a 2 of in the deck. It's been working well for me. Um, that's pretty much helping you with the pendulum engine. And we'll talk more about why I chose that engine over other stuff in a bit. Um, next, we run one Tusket. I can never pronounce them properly. Uh, this guy I used to run at 2 of, 3 of, back before we got all the new support a, a while ago. And I was testing this deck out. And I was going, you know, there are some instances where I just need to beat over something. And I was, I decided to put him back in the deck as a 1 of. He is can help you against certain matchups. He can, he can help you in certain situations very well. To just say, you know what, I'm just going to bum rush that card and run over it. And then you can do some other plays as a follow-up. And it's really nice in that regard. So he's a good one-of, and that's, like I said, a good one-of. I'd prefer to run maybe, you know, draw power and a good hand trap-esque card than him. But I see a lot of people cutting him out. I get it. Maybe you're running more of an anti-meta strategy. Um, and I, but I like him as a one-of because he can just help me get over things. And it's really good in that regard. So I just run him as a one-of, um, as a problem solver, quote-unquote. All right, next we run three... Um, of this pendulum, the red one, the red dragon. I cannot pronounce it to save my life. Um, this guy's pretty good. And initially, you know, playing you send you throughout the years, if you had told me before this new support came out, oh, you will use the you send you pendulums, I would have been like, probably not. I prefer strictly, you know, floodgate.deck. Um, and through playtesting, I found that with Demise at one of, that wasn't as feasible or as great as it used to be. Anti-meta dot deck. You could still run it, but it wasn't as good. And the new pendulum support helped out in the long run. 
So I try to find a happy medium between anti-meta strategy and the pendulum mechanic because the pendulum mechanic in this deck is it's decent. It's pretty good. It's not amazing like certain pendulum-based decks, but it's decent and good, and it can help benefit you in multiple different ways. And uh, so that's why I decided to run this guy. Um, he's probably your, one of your better pendulums, I would say, along, you know, so that's why we had to run him as a three of. Um, and for reasons, as you've seen in the deck and you'll see in a minute, we run one um, Dybok, and then I decide to run two of the arches. So two L, because L is going to help you out more in most situations, uh, depending upon your matchups, depending upon, you know, rogue base decks if you're taking this to locals because i doubt you're taking it to her, like a ycs regionals maybe if you were having if you were feeling lucky um but it works pretty well and then one r uh r is pretty decent because of the certain cards we have in the deck that work with this so that's why i chose 2l until instead of 2l and 2r i wanted just a little pendulum package uh he's pretty good die Bach is de pretty good too actually L helps you out against certain base decks a lot. And R is just there because it helps work with L. So they all work out pretty well. Um, most of these, you guys know what they do. The reason, if you guys are wondering why I chose L, I'll just read to you the effect why. If you send you monster you control would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can destroy this card instead. So if this is in your pendulum zone, you can destroy this and protect your send use. And in certain matchups, uh, that can be really important. Um, especially if it's a trap based deck even today there's a lot of destruction going around even if it's non-destruction and this can help protect it so that works out pretty well uh two fire three fire formation tanky it's staple your entire main deck for the most part is going to be all beast warriors yes your pendulums are not beast warriors but you know what you're going to be doing all the time and summoning it's Beast Warriors. So this can help search out just so many things and give you a little bit of an attack boost on top of all that. Uh, because this deck, even though it does run Pendulums, you're not going to be special summoning a ton. Uh, so that's why I like Pod Duality um, as a 3 of in this deck. Now you could run Card Demise in this deck, and I've seen people just toss in the Card Demise because it was running this deck for ages. And I, I did that when I got back into test in the deck, and then I quickly found out you know, there's other cards I'd rather run than Card Demise, just teched in there just because. And if Card Demise was to go back to three of, I'd play this deck differently. Alas, it's not at three of, it's at one of. Um, and that dictates how I play this deck a little bit differently than I normally would with Card Demise. Um, so for that reason, but even still, this deck normal summons. It relies upon the normal summon, not the special summon all the time. It can do it. Um, but you can definitely get pod duality in the deck. I mean, you don't need to go to the extra deck all the time. It is nice sometimes, especially now with links and better exceed monsters and good, decent rank fours. It's decent, but um, I like three pots still in the deck. It works pretty well. Uh, one, two, you send you uh, channeling. I can't pronounce the middle name or, or, or I can't read it upside down. This works with your pendulum monsters. This is going to help you search and do things with your pendulums really well. It's not an amazing card that I'd run as a three of, uh, but a good two, staple two of is important. If you're not going to run the pendulums, you're not going to run this pretty much. Um, one, you send you in worship. I have a love hate relationship with this card here. I see people who run this at three of and two of. And I see more three of than two of. And uh, I get it. It's a good, it's a draw card. Makes sense, right? But you got to read the fine print and think about it. So let's read this card. If you control three or more, you send you monsters cards with different names. Return as many you send you monsters you control to the hand as possible. Then draw cards until you have five cards in your hand. You can only activate this card once per turn. It's a little bit situational. A little bit. Take some setup. A little bit. Good card. But I wouldn't want it more than uh, two of. Three of, I'm not a fan of. Two of, that works out. Uh, one of, as a tech option and a card that you can get to easily and use. Yeah, I like it. Um, but I wouldn't run more than one of. But it's a decent good card. I wouldn't not run in the deck. But as a one of, it's pretty good. It's just a little situational in that regard. So that's the reason why. 
For, we also run one dimension fissure. Uh, we are going to run some antimatter strategies. You're going to see this here. We're going to get into the antimatter part of the deck. Um, we do run antimatter stuff because this deck is it's been its bread and butter for ages. But we're not going to be running it like full bore. But still, dimensional fissure is amazing. Uh, one macro cosmos again. Antimatter strategies. This deck can, doesn't need the graveyard really a lot, but it's you know a lot of decks are hurt by the extra deck. So, yep, we run that. Um, two, you send you uh, Sword Sting. This card, I really think, is underrated. It's a very good card overall. Um, this card's pretty good in the nutshell. So what does it do? And I'm reading these newer cards because you guys may not be, fit, be familiar as much with the newer you send you cards. Uh, if you control no monsters, re reveal up to two you send you monsters with different names in your hand. Then target the same number of face-up cards your opponent controls. Return them to the hand. Hmm. You can only activate this card once per turn. I like it as a two of, not a three of. And you can see why. It can get rid of problematic stuff. That's why. And it, it's, it fits well with the anti-meta strategy. Uh, two, you send your secret move. Some people like this as a one of. Some people like it as a two of. So I've seen people still run it as a three of. I like two of. Um, it takes some setup, but it's a really good card. If you got uh, one of the arches out in the field, using the pendulum mechanic a little bit more in this deck, it's more live. Um, so that's why I like it as a two of, because I'm running the pendulum mechanic, and I'm running two L's. So for that reason, I, I like this card in the deck. But if I wasn't running the pendulum mechanic, um, I probably would run it as a one of two. So just saying that. Three Drowning Meal Force. People do not think about this card. Um, it's a card that is built for this deck and for what this deck does. Because, I, and I don't see a lot of people running it, and I get it. It's a battle trap. We don't run a lot of battle traps in you know in these in this day of in age. But this one, <laughs> you know, as soon as I saw this card, I was like, back when it first came out, I was like, uh, it's made for you, Senju's. <laughs> Because you bounce your you send you's back to your hand, right? Okay, I bounce them back to my hand. My field's open. My opponent may go wham, ham, thank you, ma'am. And then you just go drowning mirror force and back to your hand, back to your extra deck. Goodbye, good day, sir. Uh, oh, you tried to negate something? I use a negation card to do it. I negate your stuff. So for that reason is why I like drowning mirror force. It's just a good card. It's just so perfectly well on this deck, and people do not see it coming. You would think they would for how old this deck is and how old this play is, but it still works. So I like it in the deck. You could run it as a two if you want to, but people just run into this card left and right. And when they see one Drowning Mirror Force, oh, they're gonna, and they get hit by it, they're going to play a little bit differently and more cautious. Believe me. Um, <laughs> it's really perfect in this deck. It's kind of like those old days. Remember when Mirror Force was, you know, really amazing? They run into the Mirror Force and they're like, "Oh my gosh, my field!" Well, it's kind of like that. Uh, our Kyber Field Center for your extra deck. We're going to run a lot of generic rank fours and some other cool stuff. So Abyss Dweller, um, Castell, the Sky Musketeer, Tornado Dragon, get rid of problematic stuff. Baga Sucha is pretty good too. Um, Cowboy. The reason we're running Cowboy in this deck, guys, is because you can do a lot of damage really quickly and you can win a little bit more with Cowboy. Um, I was thinking of running things like uh, number 27 Dreadnought and then running Gustav Max and something like that. But I found for, through playtesting that Cowboy was doing a lot more work because I'd be just like bam, 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 attack, 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 Cowboy for game, good day. So it worked in that regard. So that's why I'm running Cowboy in this deck. Um, Number uh, Brotherhood of the Fire King, Tiger King. This is a Beast Warrior Searcher for you know stuff. Why not run it? Um, Harpies, Phantasmal Dragon. Uh, you run this card in this deck. Uh, it was kind of made for this deck in Harpies. It's really amazing. It takes three, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, three level four wind monsters to make it. Comma one, comma two, comma three. Bam. Really good card. Uh, Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Uh, really good card. All else fails. Blow up the board. So you have just a generic, pretty much, rank 4 package. Uh, along with uh, Divine Arsenal AA Zeus Sky Thunder, which got damaged in the flood that happened at my place. Luckily, I was able to salvage it to some degree, um, but it is a little bit damaged on the back. But luckily, I asked a friend. He's like, it's pretty, it's playable. I was like, thank gosh. <laughs> 
uh, but one AA Zeus. This card's really good. Uh, also for your links, we got Photon Nightmare uh, Phoenix, Photon Cerberus, and Unicorn. This is your just nightmare package, which is generic and helps out with problems. Um, your Black Cluster Soldier of Chaos. This card is amazing in this deck because of the ease you can make it. Uh, we run Axis Code Talker and Bull Soul Dragon for the OTKs. So sorry for talking so long, guys. It's been a while since I've done a deck profile, so I'm really talkative. Uh, but I hope you guys all enjoyed the video and enjoy this deck profile, uh, which I really thoroughly enjoy. And I've always liked this deck for its anti-meta strategies. So until next time, guys, take care. Have fun dueling. Good luck dueling. Go, you Senjus, and I'll see you guys next time.